Hello, and welcome back for the ArtCamp 3 Week 6 Critique. Uh, now we are halfway through this course and uh, starting to transition into a little bit more imaginative work. Uh, we've obviously been doing a whole lot of studies um, of both individual elements as well as larger things um, like general compositions and all the master studies and value studies and everything else. And uh, now we're going to start trying to figure out how to make our own paintings. Um, and uh, this is both a lot of fun and very intimidating. So if you feel a little bit less comfortable this week than you have in previous uh, weeks, it makes complete sense. Uh, this is not particularly easy stuff to do if you've never done it before. And you're probably going to hate your work for a while, and that is totally fine. Uh, that's, that's very normal. Um, this stuff gets easier both as you do it and as you do more studies. Um, now that we've started to get into this stuff, if you do have free time to do some of the studies that we've been doing uh, in the past few weeks, it's a good time to do a few more of those now that you'll sort of start to understand what you need to work on. Uh, you might realize that you have an idea for some cool mountainous landscape in your thumbnail, uh, but realize you have no idea what shapes you should be using for that. And so that's a good time to kind of go back and uh, look at some of that stuff. So we're going to uh, go through everybody's work. I've got the chat on my phone. So uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, uh, go ahead and ask. And uh, other than that, I think let's uh, just dive in. Ooh. All right. So any questions whatsoever, whether it's composition or about anything in particular, um, go ahead and ask. And uh, uh, this is always a bit of a hard critique in some ways because there's no way for me to actually necessarily critique quality because I'm not really looking for quality. I'm looking for, for interesting ideas. Uh, because if you turn in ugly thumbnails, that is totally fine. Uh, in fact, if your thumbnails are a little too pretty, I might just be annoyed at you uh, because I do not do pretty thumbnails, uh, as anyone knows who has seen any of my, any of my thumbnails. Um, so I'll just kind of do my best to pick out the ones that are immediately uh, kind of interesting to me uh, and sort of show what I find interesting about them, uh, as well as try to analyze some things that you hit, habitually do or don't do. Uh, typically, uh, when you start to see a whole sheet of thumbnails, you start to notice a few patterns where people will sort of lean on the same kind of crutch uh, again and again and again. Um, we all kind of do it. And uh, once it's pointed out to you, uh, it's pretty easy to avoid in the future. So it's, uh, it's something to think about. Um, these look really good. Um, I really like just initially uh, this one up here. Uh, as well as some of the stuff going on in this one here. Uh, I think they're both quite strong and uh, could go go pretty well. Um, I think the thing I'm seeing that I'd like to see a bit more of from you is a bit more willingness to uh, push the foreground. Uh, I think your, your mid-grounds all seem pretty good and your distant backgrounds look good too. Uh, but I think you're missing out on utilizing the, the foreground as much as you can. Um, uh, most people don't realize it, but when you're dealing with landscapes, uh, often uh, there's far, far, far more foreground and emphasis on foreground than you possibly think. People think of environments and they think of backgrounds. They think of things that are really far away uh, and sort of forget to include some of the stuff really close to us. Uh, and you miss out on a lot of depth by doing that. So just by extending this path sort of tora, towards us, uh, you start to get more, more depth in there. Um, and I think the same goes for a lot of your stuff. Like this looks really cool. I really like this one. And I like, I love this, like kind of looking up at this call perspective. Uh, I just kind of want to see some more stuff happening down here, both to pull um, a bit more depth in there as well as to make this seem more epic. Um, most of the time people don't realize, but 
the, the reason we have so much foreground is so that the cool background stuff we do looks awesome. And you've got a lot of great stuff happening back here uh, in that background. But I want to see actually a lot more foreground so that I know just how dramatic and epic that actually is. I want to see, you know, whether it's the easy thing is always just to chuck a path into there. Um, I want to see some foreground in here. More layering back towards the foreground. Even see perhaps, um, you know, having some of these go really big. By actually covering up a lot of the background, we can often make it far more interesting. Um, you start to look at some of the old master paintings and stuff, and you might notice that some of the best landscapes actually have just super crowded uh, foregrounds, and then like a little like peek through where you get to see the distant landscape. And it's often a very effective uh, technique for that. So I might think about um, for you a little bit more emphasis on that on that foreground layer. Look at the look at the bottom of your canvas, and really try to utilize that as much as possible. Um, I think you're you're pretty close to doing it here in this one, but I even want to see it more. I want to see a more prominent foreground uh, in what you're doing because your your midgrounds are so interesting. Uh, that I think you need that foreground to really make them uh, make them pop. But I like what you're doing. Your shapes are really interesting. Uh, you've got a nice sense of balance going on, uh, and I think you're you're on the right track here. So looking really good. All right. These always take a kind of a second to uh, process. There's so many different pieces and so much information going on. Um, a lot of cool stuff though. Yeah, really good, uh, good sense of variety here. Um, I think you too could also use a little more foreground uh, in some of these. Uh, there's a there's a bit of a tentative nature to some of them. I think you could you could push that. Uh, ones that are really sticking out to me, I really like this one over here. Um, in fact, actually these two over here, uh, they're both quite strong. Uh, I really like. This one's got really nice sense of flow that adds a lot of depth to this. Um, and I like the layering you've got going on in this one too. I like the layer of clouds um, pushing the mountains back. Those work quite well. Um, I still like, uh, I like what's going on here. You're using these the sky to, to good advantage. Um, but if you're gonna do something like this, I'd like to see some way to utilize the foreground uh, it's that problem of having all background uh, that makes a piece just look like a background. Uh, it doesn't look like an environment painting. It doesn't look like a landscape painting. Um, it, uh, it sort of resembles kind of the animation background effect where in the movie, for instance, uh, it's, it looks great. But as soon as you start to look at it on its own, it starts to lose that um, sort of cohesiveness. Uh, it doesn't look like a full piece on its own because it's designed to have characters in front of it. Whereas what we're trying to do here for the most part is make standalone pieces that, uh, that work really well on their own. I also will say that even though this is very simple, um, I really like what you've got going on here. Your shape language is, is really nice and your overlaps are very, very effective. Um, there's a lot of depth in even this little area here just because you've got all this nice overlapping going on. So I really like what's happening here. Um, I kind of wish there was something more interesting happening back here. Uh, if it's not the focal point, that's fine. If you want you know, the focal point up here, that's, that's totally fine. But whether it's you know, an interesting sky or something happening here, I'd like to see uh, something happening back here uh, to to balance out this foreground. But I really like what you're doing with the foreground here. Uh, I think that's super effective. Um, yeah, you've got, some, you've got some really good stuff. Uh, you've got a good uh, variety of things. 
uh, you're a little, a little conservative with your perspective. I might uh, try to push some of those. Um, I'm not sure if this one maybe is a more, I can't exactly tell what's going on, which is fine, totally normal. Uh, I can't exactly tell what's going on, but it seems like for the most part, your perspective is kind of straight on. And it might be kind of fun to mix it up a bit more with some more uh, sort of down shots or up shots or something like that uh, for a little bit more variety. So just a couple of thoughts though, um, but looking, looking really good. Definitely on the right track. Right, and some value thumbnails. Um, something I struggle with a lot, but always appreciate when people are able to do. Um, these are looking good. Um, let's see here. Um, I think exactly what to let's say this. Um, I think for a lot of these, you're missing out on some of the depth just because there's not enough grouping of the values. And so they look a little bit scattered. You've sort of got your darks and lights all over the place. And I think for that reason, um, some of them are missing out on some depth. Uh, another thing is I think, um, I think the size of your brush even is sort of limiting you. It looks too simple. It looks too um, kind of primitive for lack of a better word. That is you've done in kind of large strokes, uh, something that could maybe be done with slightly smaller strokes. And obviously this is a, thumbnail, but it's starting to be a little too clearly delineated. Uh, that is, I kind of want to imply maybe that there is, you know, some more detail in there. If you're going to go ahead and do this sort of thumbnail, I want a little bit more irregularity um, to, to not necessarily um, show exactly what it is, but I want that irregularity in there so that we at least uh, know that later on we're going to want to have uh, more more things going on i suppose uh, these feel a little too simplified at the moment uh, and perhaps try out some different shapes here um, a stronger sense of, of perspective here. So kind of going back to drawing, and this can be something that happens a lot when you do value thumbnails, is that you can get focused on the shapes. And because of that, you kind of lose a sense of strong drawing. So I might encourage you to try stepping back and actually going in with a little bit more lines. Because this doesn't seem to happen as much when you are doing line work. It is actually kind of working a bit better. Um, the other thing I kind of want to think about here is that compositionally, you you kind of have a tendency to sort of have almost like a straight line along the bottom of your pieces. And while I don't think that most you know the compositional rules are you know have any merit whatsoever, uh, there is something to be said about making sure that you, util you utilize that bottom part of the canvas to add some depth to it. So rather than have this sort of branch uh, or vine or whatever it is, go kind of straight across compositionally, maybe try bringing it towards the camera a bit. So uh, try wrapping things around and letting that, uh, letting that add, some, add some depth to your image. There's also a kind of a weird psychological thing I found that Oftentimes, if you do have a complete, like, walled off bottom by just having a straight line, uh, it can sort of flatten out the image and make it less kind of approachable. It's something about kind of the dullness to having just a straight, straight line there. So maybe think about uh, 
kind of clarifying some of that perspective there and using your foregrounds to um, a bit more depth going on in them. I like what's happening here. I like a lot of the shapes you've got going on. Um, this one's pretty strong so far. Again, I think uh, it doesn't feel like a complete composition because I feel like there needs to be more, um, be more, uh, how am I trying to say this? Maybe some more um, kind of conflicting angles for lack of a better term. That is, you've got all this kind of nice flow here and they all sort of seem to be going with one another. And I'd like to see some forms that are perhaps breaking that. Uh, something that is either overlapping it or obscuring it or um, going in different directions than it. Because I think something I'm seeing with your pieces is they all sort of have this cohesive flow to them, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it can tend towards being less interesting than I think you want it to have. Um, so maybe think about uh, think about some more contrasting forms, some more overlap going on. Uh, be more willing to obscure some of those background elements. Because even though that was a super quick little thing there where I just kind of covered up some of what you had, it starts to add more layers and more interest uh, to your thumbnail. So yeah, I think that's kind of my thought. Um, but yeah, looking looking good. Looks solid so far. All right, looking good. Um, nice. I think immediately uh, I like what's happening uh, here with this one in the bottom right, uh, as well as actually this other one in the bottom right too. Uh, I like some of the stuff happening there. Uh, I think overall uh, I would warn against getting into a pattern of too much of similar perspective. Because right now, for the most part, you're kind of doing similar things with the horizon line more or less in the same place uh, in all of these. And it's, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just it's worth exploring a little bit uh, more different ones. Because it seems like when you, when you have taken a chance and done like a really high one here where you're looking down at it, um, it, it works quite well. And I'd like to see some more of that. Um, just like some of the other people, uh, I think a bit more emphasis on foreground and making sure that foreground is an important part of the composition, uh, I think would be another good thing. Uh, for instance, here, I think it's working very well. Um, but you know, what happens if you push this foreground even closer to us and add more depth in here? But if you cover up even more of your background stuff that's happening, make you know this uh, your focal point even more obscured back here. Sometimes subtlety and restraint can can make those areas that you want to pop uh, stand out even more. Same goes for values. If you want, you know, those waterfalls to really pop, maybe fade out a lot of the other stuff happening in here. And when you've got an area like here, uh, I almost considered uh, would consider a bit more clarity than you've got. Uh, maybe break it down even simpler into really obvious value shapes. Uh, sometimes things can get a little bit muddied in there with all the different brush strokes, and you've been moving things around. And so sometimes I'll find that I kind of need to go back in there and redefine things and clean up some of the values and take out some of the things. See what happens when you do that. Uh, you can start to see that just adding in this 
this foreground thing that's covering up even more. Add a little more depth what we've got here. And it kind of opens up this expansive landscape you've got back here. By having that stronger, more prominent foreground, uh, it lets us have more interesting backgrounds. And you can even go a step further. And uh, if you've got all these trees going on back here in the background, you know, there's nothing to say you can't actually cover up a lot of your landscape with, say, a tree or two. This is not the best tree I've ever drawn, but you'll forgive me. And that way we're almost, we want this feeling of almost trying to like sneak a view past what we're, what we're getting to see here. We want to we really want to see all this background stuff, but there's something kind of satisfying about hiding most of it and uh, forcing our viewer to look past all this foreground. It's to, it starts to add a little more interest there. The tree might be a bit much. It obviously, it changes the piece a lot, but it's something to think about that you can really obscure a whole lot and still be, uh, still be fine with your composition. Um, so yeah, just a just a little bit um, more mixing things up as far as your horizon line goes, um, but there's a lot of good stuff happening here. Like I like what you've done with the foreground up in here. Uh, I think that works very well. You're starting to get that that depth in there, and uh, but there's almost a, a chance to do more overlapping. Don't be afraid to overlap. You know, multiple layers really cover things up and obscure things and use those principles we've been learning about overlap and uh, use some stuff to add in more depth here. Put some thoughts, uh, but looking really good, um, like where you're headed with all of this. Looking very strong. Right. And some squishy stuff. I like squishy. Um, squishy is always good. Yeah, these are looking good. Got some really fun stuff happening here. Um, yeah. My eyes here. I'm going to take out. Some of your lines back there. There's too much colors going on for me. Uh, yeah, these look really good. Um, I really like how you're incorporating those sky shapes uh, in this here. I think that actually works really well. This is a, a super dramatic one, um, and I like that a lot, obviously. Um, again, kind of missing a bit of foreground, and I think you could going to do that by having some of this stuff come towards us without actually losing the sense of, of drama and scale here. Uh, for something like this, you might be able to get away with having um, a less of that extreme foreground. You know, you could have a figure that's you know that small, for instance, and that would be all you need. Uh, sometimes you can get away with that, but I think just a, a little more indication of a foreground uh, would be all that piece needs. Um, I really like this this um, kind of flowing landscape you've got here. I think that's a really solid uh, composition. I kind of want to clarify it and simplify it a bit more. I kind of want to pull it in here and simplify some of those lines. Uh, not quite as sold on this part here. I want that main silhouette to be the thing reading there. I really like that one. Um, for some of these, uh, there's the risk of when you're doing this kind of flowing line stuff of having too much flowing line. And you need to have these sort of counter angles that are, are adding some kind of structure and interest to this. If you have things that are too flowing where everything flows with it, it doesn't have quite the strength and dynamism that it could have. 
And so the best ones here are ones where the angles are also going against it. So you've got this angle that's kind of going in here and you've got an angle that sort of goes against it. And I think that often works really well. Um, whereas some of these where all the lines are kind of going in similar directions and I kind of want shapes sometimes going in the other direction, um, to break that up to make it um, less singularly focused, uh, if that makes sense. I also like this one a fair bit, but I kind of want to see like a focal point over here because I don't think right now you've got a strong enough sense of focal point there. And I kind of want to see maybe even some more trees here, like what you've got. I might have those kind of going more there. I think you could use this kind of dark shape up here. Maybe add some trees there and in some sort of focal point back here. The easy thing is always just a big mountain. And maybe some clouds in perspective too. Um, but yeah, these are looking, these are looking really good. Uh, You've got some strong ones. Uh, I think these three are probably my my favorites here, um, but they're working they're working pretty well. Um, do be careful with some of your perspective. Your perspective is getting off a little bit. Uh, I've known you've got the grid down there, um, and it's kind of working for when you get down here, but uh, it's not quite uh, working as you get above the horizon line. I'm not getting a strong enough sense of, of where that line is. And partially you've got, I believe the, the horizon line is here, but it keeps sort of established it so that it's up here, uh, which is part of what's throwing you off here. If you're, if you set up a horizon line, that's actually here. Um, it doesn't make sense for this perspective that you've got going on here with your drawing, uh, as in the river, I believe would end there. Um, be looking up at all this stuff. And there's not enough of that um, sort of drawing sense to get that perspective in there. So you might want to take a close look at that and make sure you're uh, make sure you're solid on the perspective. All right. You're looking great. Um, really solid stuff going on. Uh, Yeah, really, really dynamic stuff. Um, I think you're tending to actually do more interesting thumbnails when you're doing stuff in line. Um, the, the value thumbnails are good because they're punchy and impactful, but I find the ideas far less interesting. Uh, this is part of the reason that uh, I draw in line too for my thumbnails is that sure i can do a, a decent looking sketch in grayscale and make it look cool but as far as my ideas go my shapes go um my my interesting compositions go i don't find it nearly uh as effective for me and i think the same actually goes for you uh because i really like what you're doing with your line and value stuff and uh, far more than your value sketches your value sketches look good but they're not that interesting. They don't have that long holding appeal. Uh, this one's getting kind of close to being interesting, but not, not quite so with the rest of them. Um, like I really like what you're doing with this idea here. I think that works great. Uh, and I love what you're doing with trying out different things with it, uh, you know, further away shots, uh, even symmetrical shots of that. Um, I like the variety. You've got some really nice down shots that have some really, uh, dynamic close foreground objects and then some really distant stuff. Um, so yeah, your stuff, your stuff incorporating um, architecture is working quite well. Uh, you're also a little tentative with foregrounds in a lot of the time here. Um, I think uh, you know, even with something like this, where you've got distant stuff, you need something kind of getting closer to us here. 
So you need to give this stuff all a sense of scale. You could even have you know one of these things here, uh, almost like in the foreground or something like that, overlapping and uh, throwing things off. Yeah, don't be afraid to do like some crazy big overlapping objects. Uh, it's it's kind of common in a lot of things to not have enough overlapping, um, to not push that far enough. Um, for instance, here, when you've got these rocks down here, the tendency is to keep them kind of low and keep them to themselves. But don't be afraid to maybe uh, go crazy and have something that is overlapping and covering up some of your nice uh, background stuff. Because I like what's happening here, but you know, for the sake of the whole piece, uh, it might be more interesting and tie things together and give more depth if you're, if you're really bold with that. Uh, so if you've got a temple here, maybe cover up some of that temple. So same goes for something like this. Uh, I really like a lot of the stuff happening here. I think that works pretty well, but I want to see um, either more obscurity to it or, um, yeah, it needs something here in the foreground. So if you got all these trees and stuff, I'd almost be tempted to maybe have Make it seem like these trees are taller than us. Yeah, something like that might work. Um, but yeah, overall, really, really nice stuff. Uh, you've got solid perspective going on. You've got a lot of cool shapes, you've got a lot of cool concepts. Uh, I really like these. These are looking. These are looking really good. You definitely got some some thumbnails here that could be some pretty awesome paintings. So excited to see where you go from here. All right. These look cool. Um, yeah, you have got a nice nice variety of shapes going on. Uh, even a little bit of variety on, on some of the horizon lines and stuff. Uh, I might suggest uh, putting down a perspective grid on this stuff. Uh, I think you'll you'll benefit from doing that because um, some of these are are close to being good, but I think are lacking because the perspective isn't working as well as it could. Like for here, uh, I think something like this would be interesting, but just throw down a perspective grid so that you can make sure that uh, at least some of your drawing is kind of spot on. I would like to see. Um, Maybe some more of the line stuff. I think the lines are working pretty well for you. And I want to see a little bit more of that. And uh, yeah, I think you two could also benefit for some more foreground focus. Uh, you've sort of got kind of flat layers here. And I think the thing to try to get in there is, is more a sense of that. A full scene with perspective, and so when you're dealing with your perspective here, uh, think about you know what's down here at the bottom, and think about all right, well you've got all these roots here. And roots are the most perfect compositional tool where you can just kind of have maybe one or two of them coming a little bit more towards us and covering things up. You've got some other objects here that are covering things up and adding a bit more interest here. I think some more emphasis on that could be kind of cool. And again, that, that composition uh, as it relates to perspective. I'd like to see some perspective grid in here so that we can kind of see, all right, well, these are going to be the bottoms of these trees here. That's exactly how the perspective works. It'll just end up being a little more solid, um, which will make the, the whole piece work a little bit better. So if you've got that thing, then these lines on this tree would actually be going kind of up. And that's part of what's causing some flatness here is by not having that perspective grid in there, you've sort of drawn things the way maybe you think they're going to be, um, but um, without having that, that accurate horizon line in there. So just a few things to think about, um, but these are looking good. I like where you're headed with all of these. All right.
look cool. Um, I think for you, um, <clears throat> you've got some cool shapes going on. And this is actually kind of how a lot of my thumbnails will do that first starting stage. And then that's when you kind of need to figure out exactly what's happening here. Um, and this is actually a time when it's not a bad idea to use some reference, even for this stage. Uh, I know people are a little you know, confused on whether they should use reference or shouldn't use reference or any of that. Um, and for the most part, I do, I have been encouraging you kind of not to use reference. Uh, mostly try to do these from imagination. Mostly we're trying to pull from what we've been doing before uh, and bring that uh, to, to bear and creating our own stuff. So for this stage, you've kind of, you've gotten to the point where you've got some shapes and stuff like that, but you haven't really known how to draw it from there. And so this is a time when you can use the shapes you've got and start to figure out exactly what you're, you're looking to draw here. So for instance, this one, say you want to use these shapes and I like this kind of variety of shapes going on and all that sort of stuff. And that's, that's a fine start. So at this point, um, put in a horizon line, put in a perspective grid, and then start to figure out what these are. You know, are these gonna be giant, you know, rocks? Are they gonna be tree stumps? Are they gonna be mountains? Uh, what exactly are they gonna be? And then maybe even go in with line. Uh, I think you might benefit from doing that. And actually like clearly draw out like, okay, I'm gonna have, you know, some rocks here. And these are gonna be kind of, this sort of uh, rock structure here and figure out exactly what's happening here and look up some reference look up some you know stuff out west to see these kind of rocks and try drawing them using the reference there because uh, if you find yourself stuck and not sure how to draw something like that uh, there's no shame in going ahead and getting reference because um, you've already kind of blocked out a composition you've blocked out your shapes and now you're just trying to clarify it to make it read more as, as an actual like landscape. And once you put down your perspective grid and you've got your horizon line defined, you can start to define some ground stuff going on. Maybe you'll find that you want to do some stuff that's covering up all that in the background. You realize, yeah, you've got your sky back here, but you know, even though you've kind of had it blank before, maybe you, maybe you do want to add some clouds back here. Um, really go back in with line and start to start to figure out exactly what things are, because you've kind of done the first step of trying to have interesting shapes and interesting value arrangements, and now take it one step further and show us a little bit more clearly exactly what's going on. Um, if that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, I'd, I'd encourage a little bit more, kind of go back and take another pass at things. And then from there, uh, um, kind of kind of take it that step further to show us exactly what's going on with some of your shape and value things. Because for instance, I kind of like what's happening down here in the bottom, bottom right. Uh, I like this sort of kind of nighttime value scene you set up. And I want to see you take that and then go back in with some lines and show us exactly, okay, well, it's not just going to be a triangular mountain. It's going to be some sort of mountain with um, some more interest to it. Uh, you know, you've got some dark shapes on that mountain. Maybe you're going to try to show us that, oh yeah, those are going to be like rocks and the rest is going to be patches of snow. And then this foreground you've got here with these trees. And it would show us, yeah, these, these roots are going to wrap into there and have some, some rocks overlapping with it. And then I've got this layer of dark, and these are going to be kind of trees and stuff and shrubs. Maybe I'm going to have a few stars back here, or like stars. So kind of go back in and do a do a further pass on things 
and uh, show us more of what's uh, happening exactly. But uh, yeah, you're off to off to a good start here. Right. These are super contrasty. Um, nothing wrong with that. It's just my eyes. My eyes hurt. Um, but I like these. These are cool. Uh, yeah. When you look at 30 of them, it's just like, whoa, so much contrast. Any one of these on their own is not going to be quite as crazy on the eyes. Um, these are looking solid, though. Uh, I'd like to see from you um, put down that perspective grid, because when you have, uh, it worked well. Um, like down here, you've got one that has a perspective grid, and I like kind of what you're doing there. And I think it's it's added a little more solidity to it. Um, I think. Hmm. Hmm. My thinking. Uh, I'm gonna figure out exactly what's what my thought is here. All right, I think the thing that I'm seeing here is you're too inclined to fill the composition. Uh, you're too inclined to fill the composition with similar sized shapes. Um, so when you've got a composition like this, you've got all this stuff going on and all these shapes. But the thing is, is when you start to look at them individually, uh, you start to realize that all of these shapes are roughly kind of similar. They're kind of vaguely similar shape language. They're vaguely similar size. And so you keep breaking up your compositions into these kind of uniformly divided sections. Uh, whereas it'd be nice to see you know, maybe a large shape and then small shapes rather than these kind of uh, generally broken up things. Um, and this will obviously come into play a lot when you're dealing with um, actually finishing these pieces. Having these overall impactful reads is incredibly important. So say try cleaning this one up and breaking it up into fewer areas, allowing a bit of that simplification, allowing this to be one kind of big shape here. And you've got all these rocks kind of of similar sizes. Allow yourself to have, you know, one that's kind of smaller. Maybe even go back in and clean up some of the lines. I think it'll help you see this sort of effect that you've got going on. Because when they're all sort of attacked at the same rate, um, it's harder to notice the fact that you're you're repeating kind of the same size shapes and keep breaking things up. Um, so allow it to be a little bit cleaner, because um, your sort of tendency here is to see a big open space here like this. And then you're like, well, it, it doesn't match the rest, so it needs to kind of be broken up. And so you start to break it up uh, with the same kind of delineation that the rest has. And that's how you end up with um, not as much clarity of what's happening exactly. If that makes sense. So yeah, these are looking good, though. Um, I like what you're doing with the uh, shapes of these trees down here. Um, I think this is actually working pretty well. I like the I like the general start of what's happening here. I just kind of want um, to both tighten up the perspective just a little bit. I want a little more solid perspective, and then uh, yeah, to to think about that that shape language and the size and variety of the shapes you're using. Uh, I think that'll help a fair bit. But uh, yeah, looking really good. 
right. It's looking cool. Um, uh, be sure you're using your perspective grids because where you are, it's working well. And then when you're not, it's not working as well, uh, which makes complete sense. Uh, the more lines you've put in it for your perspective, the stronger your perspective is. So for instance, this one where I'm not getting a lot of perspective lines in there. Uh, yeah, I know you've drawn a couple, but not many. It means that the perspective on this isn't quite as strong as uh, I think it could be. Um, I like how you are playing with uh, some of the horizon lines. I like the variety there. Uh, for instance, I really like this thumbnail on how you've got this nice upward look at these things. I think that's working well. Um, you're sort of suffering the common problem of not being willing to cover up too much of your background, being a little too intimidated by that, and making sure that everything is, is fully seen. Uh, you don't want, apparently, to have anything that's, that's covering up your, your pretty backgrounds. Um, so be careful with that. Um, be careful of being too precious about your uh, your backgrounds. Be willing to cover up those those backgrounds. I want to see maybe even like some cloud cover here. I think that could be kind of cool. A little bit of mystery there. If those are supposed to be trees or clouds at the bottom, but that could be kind of cool. Add in some clouds. I do like this one. It's probably the strongest, which is why I'm fiddling with it a little bit. Um, just kind of throwing out a different, a couple different ideas there. Um, thinking about thinking about those overlaps. Thinking about adding in some more layers for more depth. Because before it was sort of complete separation of this this foreground triangle and then a background and not enough kind of integration of those two. Uh, I want to see some more layers going back, um, whether, that's, whether that's clouds, whether that's trees, uh, whether that's clearings in the trees, um, something to give us uh, more indication of that depth. Maybe even you could use the lighting and the cloud shadows eventually uh, to add that, but yeah. Um, and so again, with your perspective, uh, you seem to get a little bit weak and tentative when it comes to your extreme foregrounds. Uh, so for instance, you've established this perspective here, but this perspective is really going to open up a lot more than I think you've got it. Really going to come towards us. You've, you've actually got that pretty far away from the horizon line there. So I want to see some, some more dynamic perspective happening. Got the general right idea. Just take it, take it a little bit further. And then use any indication you can of that of that upward perspective there. So I think you're doing it great uh, down here. I think that works really well there. And I'd like to see some more of that when you are doing uh, your other stuff. I want to see that uh, that sense of perspective going on. But yeah, looking good. Um, got some cool things going on. Uh, just a few things to think about. You're sort of, some of these are looking pretty good. Um, you're still suffering from an, a habit to do that thing that I talked about one of those other weeks where you're doing the L and the dot. Um, you're still doing the L and the dot a lot. Um, it's not to say you can't ever do it, but uh, it's, it's certainly something to be aware of. And those do tend to be your weaker thumbnails you've got here. Uh, I'm far less interested in them. 
Um, the ones that are more interesting are the ones where you really kind of played up some different stuff happening. Um, where you've got a little bit more variety than that. Um, also, you're you're pretty distant from your your foregrounds, and you're extremely tentative with covering anything up. Um, there's there's almost never a case where something in the background feels covered up. Uh, you're not obscuring anything. It seems like you just kind of keep seeing more and more and more and more, and very little overlap. These these trees are kind of the only thing that I feel are are actually overlapping, and they're they're barely uh, doing that. Um, so I think I'd, I'd try to incorporate more of that, um, more more willingness to overlap. You know, if you've got trees, I mean, come on, you're going to have more than two trees. So be willing to cover up a lot of that. And if you've got um, you know perspective going on, if that's your horizon line, you're going to be looking up at all this stuff. So don't forget to add those little subtle indications of of perspective there. You know, throw a line or two wrapping around there, just so we know that yeah, you're looking up at that stuff. And uh, getting a, much of a chance to get um, depth in those foregrounds, just because you're you're not willing to have large prominent foregrounds, which is actually taking away from your backgrounds that you're doing here. Um, they do look currently more like backgrounds than they do environments. It feels, it feels more like you've got mid-grounds and a little bit of background. And I want to see see that foreground from you. I see that willing to get really close with things. Um, now this up here on the right, upper right, I like, I like a lot, um, but I think it needs to use some of the stuff that's happening here um, and allow, allow something to come forward. Rather than this be a flat object back there, let this thing really come forward. Let it let there be some more depth in here. Now your foreground maybe to even cover up a lot of your background. So add in some more shapes that are, are breaking away from your sort of standard way of, of doing this. When you've got a mountainous landscape like this, it's sort of your tendency to kind of do that and sort of smooth things out and make sure there's no overlap or anything like that. And, you know, even though there are mountains like that, you know, for the sake of composition, do something that breaks that, do something that covers it up, do something that overlaps, you know, multiple layers goes against the flow of those things. Uh, just to add a little bit more interest, to add more depth, to add more overlap, all that kind of stuff. I think that's um, something to think about. And stop doing the L. No more Ls and dots. You are hereby banned from doing L plus dot. Um, I know we all have like things we tend to lean on. Um, and that is certainly the thing that you tend to lean on. Um, I do like uh, some of the stuff you're doing here. Like, I think this works pretty well. Uh, I think that's pretty solid. And I could see that being a pretty effective piece with just maybe, you know, one or two more little rocks down here. And I think you're pretty much done there. 
and I think that works that works fairly well. Same goes for this uh, bottom line one down here. I think that's close to being fairly interesting. Uh, it just doesn't have a it doesn't have a foreground in it. Isn't this dude here? Um, but yeah, looking good overall. Um, just some just some thoughts there that I think will push you into a more interesting uh, interesting place. Right. These are looking really good. Um, I really like um, your values here. Your values here are really nice. Uh, really like your value and edge work here. Um, it turns into a little bit more of a sketch than a thumbnail uh, for the sake of what we're doing here, but it obviously functions as a thumbnail. Uh, just a thing to think about there. Um, uh, the other thing that that sort of along those lines is that just like I mentioned before, a lot of your shape sizes are getting very similar and you want to, you want to be sure you break those up. Uh, you want a nice variety of large shapes and small shapes. And, uh, just kind of think about that, uh, as you're, as you're going forward with these. Um, these are working well, but again, they have that, problem of looking like a background more than an environment. Um, whether that means you want to see more of this bottom layer, maybe extend the canvas even, or whether um, you want more depth added to a sky or something, or maybe there's, there's these mountains that are coming around here. Uh, maybe you actually bring those a little bit closer to us so that we've got a little bit more foreground. Uh, I'm not sure what the answer is there, but this feels like too much of a background uh, for what we're what we're trying to do here. Um, I like what's going on here. I think this has some really solid perspective to it and a lot of interest to it. I really like this. It's kind of like looking up at all these uh, trees. Um, it works pretty well. Um, there's this sort of water area is a little bit awkward. I want to see maybe either more or less of that water. I either want to see this kind of tree come off here and keep going past it or push it up just a little bit. Um, it's just kind of compositionally just feels a little bit off to me. And that's obviously a lot of how I do my own compositions is it just kind of feels a little bit weird. And so that's a case where it just kind of it feels a little awkward and I want to push it up just a little bit. I want to give that uh, a touch more breathing room. Just right there. Obviously not the only answer to that, but we just felt like something that was a little bit, a little bit awkward. Um, I think in general though, I do like your line compositions or sorry, your, your line uh, thumbnails a little bit more just because when you're not focused on sorting those values, uh, you're more comfortable with kind of designing interesting shapes and designing interesting compositions. Because I love what you're doing with getting depth in here and getting really nice perspective. These trees, these trees feel really solid already. And they've got this nice like overlapping and stuff. And you've got a great sense of looking at the underside of the canopies here. And so I kind of want to see you do a little bit more line thumbnails. Uh, the value stuff can obviously work really well, um, but I think tends to be more interesting when you start out with the line stuff. Because um, clearly you can, you can handle the values once you get to them. Um, but I think the starting out it would work better to uh, start with those, uh, start with those lines. But yeah, these looking good. Uh, Got some cool shapes, uh, interesting stuff happening there. Yeah, I like it. All right. Got all kinds of stuff here. Some of these are obviously hard to read just because I don't know what they are, but I'm not immediately put off by not knowing what something is, that's totally fine. 
Um, that's not exactly the, the point of what we're doing here. Um, not exactly sure what's happening with this one, but I know I like it. I like the shape language you've got going on with this central thing. Um, I guess it was, oh, I guess it's a mountain. Yeah, sorry. I was like, I was kind of seeing a sea creature there and I thought it was particularly cool, but I do like the, the shapes and lines and stuff you've got here. Um, don't know if the, I think the boat might be trying to be too literal at this point, And I'd rather just kind of see a shape to imply a boat um, than actually trying to like draw in a few lines to, to show it. Um, I, think, uh, I think for you where you've got uh, perspective grids, it works way better than when you don't have perspective grids. So I'd encourage you to use those more, uh, you know, put in a horizon line, put in a few lines to show that stuff. Uh, I think it's working much better when you've got uh, those indications of perspective, because I think you get a little bit uh, off and a little bit confused when, when you don't have that. Um, so I'd encourage you uh, to do that. Cause I think like this one in the bottom, right could work pretty well if the perspective was a little bit more solid. Because right now it kind of looks like it's here, but then you're looking up at this other stuff and this isn't quite receding well. And yeah, uh, and obviously these are thumbnails, but the perspective is really, really important uh, to get across right away because it actually dictates a lot of what we're able to do with our, um, uh, with our compositions. But uh, yeah, you've got some cool stuff going on here. Um, I might, if you're if you're interested in doing sort of coastal shots, um, like some of the nice sea scenes you've got here, I might look at a few um, maritime painters and take a look at that and. Um, yeah, I might uh, I might see how they compose things uh, because I like what you've got here, for instance. I like I think this works pretty well. It's a nice kind of grouping of things here, but I'd want to see maybe either a little bit more depth in here or some indication of of what's happening here. Maybe the maybe the boat needs to actually be on the canvas or further away or used as more of a sense of scale for this. Uh, I think the, the boat right now just feels a little out of place for what it is. I also just noticed this one here. I actually like this a lot, um, but I couldn't immediately read it just because of the values being off and all the focus being kind of on these. Um, so I think if you actually rearranged this where the, the character or creature uh, is a little bit bigger and is taking up a little bit more of the composition and then even fade out all this background stuff behind him. So he pops a little bit more. I think that actually works quite well. So that's the thought. Um, but yeah, looking good. Uh, a little bit more perspective grid, which I know I've told pretty much everyone. All right. Is it looking good? Um, you got some nice values here. You got some interesting shapes going on. Yeah, I think uh, just like I said before to someone else, I think what you need to do now is take this and take it that step further and actually go back in maybe with lines. Uh, I think that might help. And to, to clarify what's happening exactly, because I like this. Uh, I think this is this is pretty cool. This is pretty effective. But now I want to see you go back in here and actually draw in what's happening and show us like, okay, so I'm going to have you know, some mountains here leading into maybe a town and I'm going to put a perspective grid down because I love perspective grids. And I'm going to show you like, okay, there's going to be a city wall here and, and it's going to be this, this cliff side going down. And then I've got, these layers of trees down here. And what are these mountains exactly going to be doing back here? And I want to see that, that 
that second step of, of re-clarifying. Uh, this can happen a lot, I think, with uh, value thumbnails, is that it's easy to forget about um, making sure that we've got uh, a lot of clarity because we get kind of wrapped up in doing these values and lose sight of showing exactly what we're trying to convey in our pieces. So I think that would be that would be the next step for you is I think some of these work pretty well, but I want to see that that next step taken um, and a little bit more interest in there. Uh, same goes for kind of breaking down into smaller shapes. I think that that could also use to happen. Um, I think they're they're kind of a little too simplified. Like here, you've got you've got an indication of a foreground, but I want to see like okay, is it is it actually going to be like that, or is there actually going to be some some smaller shapes here? Um, we can break that up and show that there's going to be a little bit of depth there. And just a little bit, a little bit more. Um, whether you do that in line or values is kind of up to you. Uh, but I think I would encourage you to to try doing it in line. I think that'll help a fair bit. Uh, I think it could be a little bit better for getting you back on track with focusing on the the ideas and the concepts uh, more so than trying to have uh, good values at this stage. All right. Cool. Um, yeah, it's looking good. Uh, this looks nice. Uh, it's a great idea. Um, let's see, again, a little bit more foreground. And also for the foreground, maybe a little bit of um, ways to bring that foreground into it, ways to kind of attach it. So maybe some layering to take back there. Uh, that might help a little bit to kind of tie that foreground together with the with the background. Um, just because I've got a magic card that's basically those composition. Um, <laughs> uh, in which case, I'll just do the things that I did in my own composition, and that is add in a little bit of uh, foreground, obscuring some of the background. And also providing some some values uh, for it. I think I had a had a figure sitting over here, but we'll put a figure here. Um, to add in a little bit more depth. Uh, I really like this. I think this is actually quite good uh, depth going on here. I think that works pretty well. Um, and you've got, I think in this case, enough foreground. I think this this kind of layering back here is giving you enough layers that it's adding a lot of interest. Um, I'd want to see probably a fairly interesting sky for something like this. Um, it doesn't have to be super dramatic, um, but maybe just a little bit of you know some of those uh, cirrus clouds to to give us some more depth or something like that. Once you get to that stage, um, but I think that works pretty well. Um, I think the thing that is working well there that is missing in some of your other stuff is that is that overlap. Um, so, for instance, here you've got you've got some cool stuff happening, but I'm not getting the sense of overlap. None of these none of these rocks are overlapping one another. They're all just sort of stare to one another. So I want to see some stuff where uh, you've got some overlapping and covering up one another. So a couple of thoughts there. I think in general, uh, I really like what you're doing here. Like I like these waterfall shots here. I think both of those work really well. The tree shots are also working quite well. Um, for the shot like this, you want some sort of big 
pay off. So you either want something really interesting here in the foreground, or you want some big, you know, payoff in the background. It's like, oh, wow, that's, that's what it's about. Because right now it doesn't feel like there's enough kind of happening there uh, for what you want. It's got that background problem of looking too much like a background and not enough like a, like an actual environment. But these are looking good. Uh, I think you're, you're taking to these well and just kind of keep going, uh, do a ton more of them, but they're looking good. All right. These are looking good. Um, I think on a technical note, you're, you're kind of making this a little harder for yourself by using such a tiny little brush um, in relation to the size of your canvas. By having this really tiny little brush, it's like having a pencil and then doing a thumbnail on a full like eight and a half by 11 page like the full page um, in that you've got a really tiny tool that you uh, that you're using to make marks and a very large amount of space to do that in, uh, which is great for when you're doing finished drawing. But for this stage, I think can get you into a lot more trouble because um, I like what you're doing here, but it doesn't. Uh, I think the fact that you had such um, fine control of it meant that you didn't have the chance to have um, quite as much, uh, I guess, immediacy to your, to your thumbnail. So I'd actually encourage you to use maybe a bigger brush and zoom out more and allow yourself to kind of cover up those big areas uh, more quickly. Um, I think it'll lend itself towards stronger uh, thumbnails because whereas there it kind of works. And I also, I do like what's happening here. I think in general, the, the scale of that thumbnail uh, is, is sort of messing with you a bit. Whereas I think when you, when you start to zoom out and you start to look at it at this scale, um, what you're generally doing here is working well. It's just um, the amount of lines you needed to add to show what you're trying to add uh, is kind of screwing you up. So whereas you could just kind of imply all of those trees there and the rock there, Uh, very quickly with some big thick lines. Um, I think by having a need to do such uh, such fine lines and so many of them meant that uh, your compositions aren't as strong as I think they could be pretty easily by just um, using a thicker line. But again, I like I like what's happening there. I like what's happening there. I think those are working pretty well. You've got some nice layers going on. Uh, I like your rock shapes. I think they're pretty interesting. Uh, so I like the fact uh, that you are working in line. I think when you did the the values, you started to simplify too much, which is just kind of a, a side effect of working in values is we can tend to ignore, you know, other shapes because we're so focused on kind of maintaining a general silhouette. We lose track of, well, maybe I'd like to make this more interesting. Uh, what exactly is happening with this thing? Um, yeah. Overall, looking good. Um, yeah, you've got some good stuff happening here. Uh, your perspective sort of disappears a little bit on your most foreground rocks. Uh, so I take a look at some really good paintings uh, and figure out exactly what's happening there with those extreme foreground ones. Um, they're sort of flattening out. And uh, I want to see, see you figure out that last bit of perspective where you've got even ones overlapping in front of it. Um, because clearly you've got a strong enough sense of perspective in the mid-ground and background that I think you can pull that into the extreme foreground and uh, have a bit more solid sense of things there. But it uh, looks good. All right, and that's that's all of them. So a little bit faster critique today because uh, obviously I can't get in or don't want to get in too much into nitpicking your little thumbnails because they are just thumbnails. Um, but uh, yeah, these looked good. Uh, you guys definitely got the handle on this pretty quick. Um, these are these are really important and are really important for what we're doing in the coming uh, weeks or months. Um, and uh, hopefully this is something that you'll kind of 
incorporate into part of your practice and something that you'll keep doing for, for years to come. Uh, I do thumbnails all the time and, uh, it has really, really helped out my, my painting process. Uh, it's given me a lot more ideas, um, and, uh, expanded the sort of stuff that I would tend to do uh, a whole lot. So looks really good. Uh, really good work. And, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's all for today. So thanks again for everything guys. And uh, I will see you next week.